Welcome back to John's Films. I get a lot of questions in the comments behind my YouTube videos. The one I get the most, what hardware should I buy for DaVinci Resolve? Today I want to teach you how to answer that question for yourself. And I'm going to show you how DaVinci Resolve uses CPUs and GPUs across five different codecs with five different standard operations. So let's come learn the science behind Resolve and what it does with your processor and graphics card. Come check it out. And into the setup, I've got two major computers that I'm testing on. The first one is my Ryzen Ripper machine. It will have a 3950X in it. I do scale or turn off some of those cores as we go through our testing, though. And it's got 64 gigabytes of 3466 megahertz RAM. The Mini-Me machine, that is the Ryzen 3600 6-core machine, has 32 gigabytes of 32 megahertz RAM. A difference is noticeable during benchmarking, but when you're talking about the scope, scale, and spend on these two machines, both of them fit into their price bracket pretty well. The GPUs that will swap between the two are a 2080 Ti and a 2070 Super, and will run Puget Systems 4K Benchmark. This benchmark tests five different codecs. That would be the Cinema 4K, the H.264, ProRes 422 color space, ProRes 444 color space, and RED footage. It tests those across five different tests. Those tests are two basic tests and three primarily GPU-focused tests. So let's look at the overall score here, and we're just going to go for the top end, the 3950X, the 2080 Ti, and the 2070 Super. These spit out a benchmark score, which, without any context, doesn't really relate to much. And so we need to dive in further to truly understand the performance and the price point that might make sense for us to purchase at. The 2070 Super comes away with a 993 top score, and you can see you get about 25% more performance for the 2080 Ti. All things the same here, 2070 Super costs $550, the 2080 Ti costs $1,150. It means that last 30%-ish of performance is costing you five $600. If we look further into the scores, we can now start to break it down by cores. So I want to understand what CPU should I pair with which GPU. In Getting into the details, we're going to look across each of the cores for both of the graphics cards. And what we'll see is that, yes, the CPU, when looking at all codecs and all tests for each of the codecs, the CPU does constrain throughout the entire scope of the testing. So you can see the CPU is constrained by six cores. It grows as you go to eight, it grows again as you go to 12, and it grows again as you go to 16, meaning the CPU is your constraint running all the way up here. The GPU, if left untethered, would likely be up above 1232. Again, that's for all of the core testing and all the codec testing, which is what we see here as we see both of the GPUs as we see GPU scaling where the 2080 Ti does remain faster than the 2070 Super. You'll see here in the 4K Cinema codec, the scaling goes up more, the slope of this line is steeper, meaning that that codec appears to respond better to a higher end GPU. If you know you're working in 4K Cinema, maybe this becomes more of a value proposition for you. But what really gets interesting to me is if we start to separate the tasks that are being performed. I mentioned earlier there's some GPU tasks and there's some basic tasks. The GPU tasks are in DaVinci Resolve, the OpenFX, the Temporal Noise Reduction, and then a tr torture test of 3x Temporal Noise Reduction. These are enabled heavily in the GPU in DaVinci Resolve. Notice, however, as we break this down further, we take the GPU accelerated tasks out of the benchmarks and look at them alone. Here we can see at six cores, the results are constrained by the processor. However, at eight cores, 12 cores and 16 cores, we get roughly the same result across each of the GPUs for each of the results. So from a torture test perspective, 2070 Super pretty much gives us the same exact score of 52.8 across the bottom, and the 2080 Ti gives us quite close to the 76.6. .6. Meanwhile, at the top end, for just OpenFX usage, again, we get roughly the same score for the 2080 Ti, roughly with some growth, the same score of the 2070 Super. This means that if you're going to be using 
GPU accelerated tasks in DaVinci Resolve, the number of cores in your machine doesn't matter. What this means is that if you're using GPU accelerated tasks on any of those codecs, on average, around eight cores seems to be the max utilization that you can really benefit from when you're spending money on a CPU. That eight again correlates pretty closely to a 3700 or a 3800 Ryzen processor. So let's take a look at exactly what that means. Well, if I take the cost of a 3700, it's $300. If I take the cost of a 3950X, it's $722 for roughly the same performance. That's roughly the same performance whether you go with the 2070 Super or even a 2080 Ti because you are constrained by the graphics card, not by the processor. Okay, so now let's talk to the usual YouTube codec, H.264. Most of the consumer or prosumer cameras shoot H.264, and so a lot of YouTubers are shooting H.264. Let's look at what that means. Well, you can see across all five of the codecs, we run tests for 6, 8, 12, and 16 cores. Again, on both graphics cards. So let's dive into this a little bit. So let's dive into this a little bit. We're going to start by understanding the basic operations. There are two tests that are run. The first one is a basic grade, so that would be footage that's been color graded. And then there's the execution for optimized media. These are the two tests we'll call our basic operations. Again, it becomes very interesting. We're running at 6 core, 8 core, 12 core, and 16 cores. You can see you do get, as you go up a number of cores, a scaling that makes more performance for more you pay. That's what you would hope for, right? But what gets interesting is in these basic operations, because you're not utilizing the GPU very much, you're getting almost the same performance from the 2070 Super that you are from the 2080 Ti. And again, the 2070 Super is a $550 graphics card, and the 2080 Ti is an $1,150 graphics card. Something to think about when you're thinking about what am I doing in DaVinci Resolve? Am I executing basic grades and rendering? Am I using many special effects? Because if you're just doing basic grading, this is going to be your performance curve. Buy a cheaper graphics card, buy a more expensive processor, and move on. However, if you are going to be using noise reduction, if you're going to be layering on the open effects, if you've got something akin to a, you're much closer to GPU bound as you go further up the scale here. Notice at six cores, you see that the charts, uh, at least with the 2080 Ti, it is bound by the six cores. The 2070 Super is not. How do I know that? Well, the 2070 Super holds almost exactly the same performance, no matter how many cores are here. So that tells me the 2070 Super is the cap. The six cores we can see could go higher, except the 2070 Super is clipping it. And so you are GPU bound here in H.264 with the GPU operations, meaning, heck, even a six core processor can hold its own against a 16 core processor if this is your target. Now, nobody is going to very specifically use only GPU accelerated work, and it's going to be a bit of a blend, but comparing that with the knowledge we had from above, it's starting to shape out that an 8-core processor when paired with the 2070 would be a smart purchase for DaVinci Resolve. Next, we're going to take a look at the 2080 Ti. Again, it is constrained at the 6 cores, but once you hit 8 cores, you're pretty much flying through and capped by your GPU again. So the 2080 Ti is again capping your performance, no matter how many more cores you throw at it. With a blended workload, if we jump back up, you could see that you could benefit some from those extra cores with H.264 work. However, is it going to be worth it if you put noise reduction and some open FX in the majority of your clips? Now the price per frame, that is the amount of money you pay for each individual frame, varies between 6, 8, 12, and 16 cores. Here we are looking at it with the CPU focused tasks, that's the basic and the optimized media. Obviously, the cost of the 2080 Ti weighs heavily on the six cores, and therefore it costs more per frame. This comes out to about what we would expect, but when we jump into the GPU focus, here's where it gets very interesting. 
While you do pay more at six cores for each of the GPU frames, they cost around $33 per frame. Now as we jump into the GPU enabled task, that being the noise reduction, etc. Here you're noticing that while yes, the 2080 Ti still costs more, it gives you more relative performance to shorten the gap a bit. And so you're looking around $33 per frame here with six cores and $22 per frame with six cores in the 2070 Super. But when you get up to 16 cores, you're starting to see that the price for the graphics card gets offset by its performance and the 2070 Super becomes less of a value than the 2080 Ti. At that point, you might as well just pay for the extra performance, right? So what this tells us is if you're going to put a 16 or maybe even a 12 core processor in your computer, step up from a 2070 because the cost per frame is very high in the 2070 at that point, and you might as well just pay for the extra performance. If we now overlay the performance data here in yellow and teal with the price per frame data that we saw previously, we can see that the price per frame, while it gets more expensive near the top, the performance of both the 2080 Ti here at the top and the 2070 Super doesn't change much. And that's because we are GPU bound here on the GPU test. Overlay that with the GPU learnings that we had when we tested all five codecs and saw that the 8-core processor made the most sense across all codecs. It holds the same here with H.264. Our key takeaways have to be, one, know your workload. Understand exactly what you're going to do in terms of 4K, 8K footage, 1080p, whether or not you're going to be using GPU accelerated effects or not in the studio version, and never out-purchase yourself. In other words, don't go buy a 2080 Ti and a 4-core processor. Make sure that you pair those. Helpful tip, if you're going to be buying a 2070 Super, don't buy more than 8 cores. If you're going to be using any level of GPU acceleration, it pretty much isn't going to be worth it. So, keep those things in mind. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.